We will start our study of solid state physics by looking at the structure of the materials. And uh, before going in, into further into solid state physics, let's look at the broader view, the condensed matter systems. In condensed matter uh, physics, we're looking at materials uh, and classifying them according to the rigidity of the bonds between atoms and molecules. So this is what matters. So uh, this is going to affect the flexibility of the bonds uh, between atoms and molecules. So it will change the um, <coughs> rigidity of the material. So if the bonds are very strong and uh, we can call the materials as hard materials and uh, if, if the uh, material has uh, bonds that are flexible, that is basically going to be called soft materials. So we have the distinction between hard materials and soft materials based on the rigidity of the bonds between atoms and molecules. Now in hard materials we have a further classification. They can be further classified according to the manner with which their atoms are arranged. So atomic arrangements leads us to the classification as crystalline or uh, non-crystalline solids. So what is the difference between crystalline and non-crystalline solids? Well, we look for a periodic arrangement of atoms with long range order. So if that is the case, the solid is said to be crystalline. A good example is a silicon wafer where we have uh, the atoms uh, oriented in uh, with a periodic uh, arrangement. Okay, <coughs> if the solid uh, consists of uh, local regions, uh, single crystal regions with various orientations, that means if we have a short range order, then it's going to be called polycrystalline. For example, if you make sputtered uh, films of copper, they tend to be uh, polycrystalline. Um, if the atoms are randomly distributed with no long or short range order, then the material is called amorphous. The example is uh, silicon oxide. This is silicon oxide in glass form. So glass uh, is amorphous. So <clears throat> we classify the materials according to the arrangement of the atoms. If there is a nice periodic arrangement with long range order, the materials are crystalline. If there is a local order, a short range order with single crystal regions and each region has a different orientation, it's polycrystalline, for example, sputtered copper. If there is no order, it's randomly distributed atoms, then we have amorphous structure. A good example is glass. So if you look at this arrangement, you can see here, if you talk about a two-dimensional uh, structure here, you can see a period periodic arrangement of atoms like this um, with a well-defined um, period between uh, atoms. So if we go from one atom to the other, at the other atom, uh, a certain distance, if you go the same distance in the same direction, you find another atom there that's called translational. Uh, symmetry. So you see that these atoms are arranged in this nice periodic fashion, so it's crystalline. Uh, this arrangement is local in polycrystalline materials, so we have uh, one uh, single crystal region with a certain orientation and another one and another one. You can see that we have these so-called uh, grains here, so each of this is, so this is uh, a grain one, this is grain two, grain three, grain four, and this is grain five. And in between these grains, we have these boundaries. Those are called grain boundaries. So we have this granular structure in polycrystalline materials, for example, sputtered copper. And in amorphous materials, for example, glass, we have this completely random arrangement of atoms. There is no well-defined order. Okay, 
So if you look at condensed matter systems, uh, as I said, we classify them according to the rigidity of the bonds. And so these hard materials and soft materials are subjects of different types of physics. Solid state physics uh, studies hard materials and soft condensed matter physics studies soft materials. So what are these hard materials? Uh, crystalline solids, uh, which could be metals, insulators, semiconductors. So you can make uh, crystalline copper, sapphire, silicon, for example. Uh, Non-crystalline solids, these could be uh, quasi-crystals, uh, such as aluminum-based alloys. Uh, they are ordered, but they don't have translational periodicity. Polymers, uh, for example, rubber, they have some order. Amorphous solids, for example, glass, where we have a random arrangement. In soft matter, we have colloidal dispersions, for example, uh, silica, nanosilica in water, uh, liquid crystals, uh, LCD displays, for example, biomaterials, proteins, membranes, polymer melts and solutions. These are all in the uh, uh, set of uh, topics that we have to uh, study in soft condensed matter uh, physics. Okay. So, um, why are we interested in this uh, structure? Well, we, we have a spatial uh, regularity. It's very important because the electronic properties are very sensitive to the short range order. So, the degree of order in the material basically reflects itself in the electronic properties. Uh, and that is due to the fact that the distance between neighboring atoms in a crystal is of the order of a few angstroms uh, comparable to the wavelength of electrons. So the distance between neighboring atoms is a few angstroms. Okay, uh, but when we talk about crystalline state, we're actually considering an idealized version which has a complete perfection and it's infinite in size. So you can see that it has to be, be infinite in size, so if it's finite in size, it has a crystal imperfection. Uh, we then add to this idealized state some effects uh, of the real structure, such as imperfections. These could be impurities, defects, surfaces, and these are considered as perturbations. So we always start our study by looking at the crystal as a nice periodic arrangement, which is infinite in size. And then we add imperfections such as surfaces, impurities, defects, etc. as perturbations to our study. So this is going to be our strategy throughout this course. So in summary, uh, we are classifying materials as hard and soft materials. Hard materials are, uh, are the subject of solid state physics. The, the structure of the materials is uh, classified as crystalline and non-crystalline. Uh, non-crystalline ones can be polycrystalline and amorphous. And this all basically reflects itself in the um, type of order uh, we consider in the materials. And the type of order is important because it, it is uh, eventually what determines the electronic properties of the material. So we talked about the classification of uh, materials and uh, the condensed matter physics is really uh, the broader view and uh, it includes solid state physics and soft condensed matter physics but the subject of this course is solid state physics. Uh, so when we look at the, the local order in polycrystalline materials we have several grains with different orientations and grain boundaries, amorphous systems we have random arrangement, crystalline systems we have perfect um, um, arrangement, periodic arrangement of atoms and we talked about the fact that uh, in reality we have imperfections such as impurities, defects, surfaces uh, and finite size effects and these are all included as perturbations in the theory of uh, solid state physics and uh, basically this is uh, our starting point uh, for our discussion so uh, in the next video we will talk about the crystalline structure in more detail.